What's going on, everybody in the YTBC and uh, LDBC? What's going on? I'm back talking boxing. Uh, been away for a minute. Man, just been working seven days a week grinding. Um, but uh, just want to check in on this Rigo Lomachenko fight. Um, disappointed. Um, I had Loma winning the fight. I thought he would win by stoppage uh, late on in the fight. <laughs> Uh, didn't see Rigo quitting though. Uh, but I mean, when you're getting out of class like that, you know, so you know, some guys just can't take it, you know. And I, I feel like last night he was gonna get knocked out, and I think he knew he was gonna get knocked out, and he just felt like the best thing for him to do was just quit. Uh, I don't believe the hand injury thing, but I don't know the guy, so the guy might, you know, it might be telling the truth. I'm not sure. I don't believe it, but maybe we'll see some x-rays or something to prove us wrong. Uh, Lomachenko uh, just just showed how good he was last night. I mean, he he circled him. He he, he circled away from the left hand. Uh, he kept popping Rigo with a straight right hand. Uh, triple uppercuts. Uh, Rigo kept ducking down low. And Loma was just jabbing him to the head. Jab, rabbit punching him in the back of the head when he was bent over, leaning over on the back of his neck, putting his weight on him. All the things you're supposed to do. Uh, Rigo, only option was to hold when uh, Loma got inside because I figured if Loma got inside, that's where the body work was going to really uh, destroy Rigo. Uh, and I think Rigo knew that, so he held on. Um, I don't really have a problem with the holding. Uh, it was a little bit excessive because uh, we couldn't really see the fight because he kept holding. Um, but Rigo just showed last night he's, he, he's basically a one-trick pony. If you take the left hand away, he doesn't really have much. He, he does have a good jab. He tried to use his jab last night, but just like any good fighter, you know, Crawford, Triple G, when you jab, they jab. And they take your jab away. And that's what Loma did last night. He basically took Rigo's jab away. And Rigo was left with nothing. Uh, he couldn't fight inside. Rigo did have the reach. But when he took his jab away, you know, after about the second round, I kind of figured, you know, Rigo, uh, uh, Loma was getting ready to to turn up. And I don't think he turned up. I, I would have liked to see like the round seven, eight, and nine. I really believe he would have turned up because Rigo is very – he's not an active uh, puncher in the ring. And I didn't understand where guys were saying that Rigo was going to stop Loma or he was going to do this and do this and Rigo said he's going to beat his ass. And I just didn't see that because Rigo is not an active puncher. Rigo doesn't throw more than 10 or 11 punches around. And, and Lomachenko is very active. Very active in the ring. He's switching up speeds, pow, 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 pow. You know, everything, he, he, he he's just a very active guy in the ring. Uh, he wants to press the action. And he had Loma, he had Rigo fighting off the back foot the whole night. Um, the size advantage, it was a factor. Uh, I think Rigo, it affected Rigo just the size factor. I think it affected him. Now, why he talked all this shit before the fight, I'm not sure. Um, in all honesty, he should he should have took the fight years ago. And he would have made more than he made last night. So he waited. And then had to come on. Instead of having to go up to 126, he ended up having to go up to 130. And he only made $400,000. And he quit. Now he looks like a bitch. Should have took the fight, man. Should have took the fight years ago. He was younger. He was more active. Now, he, you know, he's, he says he's 37, but in all honesty, that, that means he's probably like 41, 42. Uh, I'm not sure where Rigo can go from here because I'm not sure. Mm, I'm not sure where he can go from here. Uh, it may, it, you know, some of the guys at 122 might want to take the fight with him now. They might want to take the fight since they, you know, they, they think he's vulnerable. Uh, as far as Loma. Uh, Mikey Garcia or the Robert Easter winner would be fine. I wish he would unify uh, the 130-pound division first uh, just to go ahead and unify. Bud did it. Bud went and dominated one, 
what, 130, 130, 135? No, nah, 135, 140. Now he's going up to 147. Uh, and I think he's going to dominate that division too. I do think my boy Keith Thurman is going to give him a hell of a fight because Keith Thurman is pretty active. He's got movement. Uh, I'm not sure about Spence. I think Spence is kind of a sitting target for Bud because um, I'm not sure Spence has a lot of movement. Spence, to me, is almost like a triple G as far as he's going to come forward. Uh, body shots. Uh, There's not a lot of head movement, not a lot of movement. Uh, I think Thurman and Crawford would be the best fight. That's just my opinion. I know a lot of guys love Spence. I like Thurman. It is what it is. Uh, I do rank Bud number one in my pound for pound. <clears throat> I only do a two-man pound for pound. I got Bud and I got Lomachenko. And uh, it's going to be hard for Lomachenko to catch Bud because at 147, Bud is going to get horned here soon, so he'll have a belt. And then eventually, if he gets Thurman and he gets Spence, whew, I'm not sure Loma at 130 or 135 is really not uh, that much competition up there for him to ever be able to pass uh, Bud. Uh, and I did like what Loma said last night, that this fight really doesn't do anything for him. Um, I think he just took the fight because Rigo – Kept talking. Rigo wanted the fight so bad. And all Rigo fans were saying, oh, Lomachenko's ducking. He's scared of Rigo. And before the fight, Bob Arum and Lomachenko basically told y'all what was going to happen. I mean, was, I just think you guys got to get out of your emotions, man. You got to stop picking fights with your emotion and hating fighters because the managers. and Man, whatever Bob Arum did to Rigo, which was messed up, which... I hate that for Rigo. I wanted Rigo to be a star. I honestly did. But Lomachenko doesn't have nothing to do with that. He has nothing to do with what Bob Arum did to uh what Bob Arum did to gosh damn Regan down. He had nothing to do with it. Lomachenko ain't never been caught saying nothing racist. I I'm not sure why you guys hate fighters because of race and stuff like that. It's just to me, it just seems like so childish, like so immature, you know? I mean, I deal with people by what I know, you know what I'm saying? I don't know Lomachenko to be a racist, so why would I not, you know what I mean? Why would I not like him as a fighter because of his race or what his promoter did? Or You guys got to stop that because there's no way in hell you could have watched Rigo fight uh and, and, and thought other than the Donair fight, uh, he didn't even stop Donair, you know, that he was going to stop, stop a fighter of Lomachenko's caliber. I'm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure where you come up with that from. I'm just, I just don't see where, I mean, stylistically matched up, it was just a nightmare matchup for Rigo. He wasn't big enough. He didn't, he doesn't have the boxing uh, the, the the boxing punching output to beat somebody like Lomachenko. I mean, Lomachenko has the youth, the size, uh, the, the punching output, the speed, the agility. I mean, and, and guys said that, Loma, that Rigo was going to stop him. I mean, I just, you guys got to get out of that. And the crazy thing is Bob Arum's got Bud Crawford, Lomachenko, and if War wasn't if War didn't retire, War was eventually coming over the top rank too. So we would have had the top three pound for pound fighters. That's who Bob Aaron would have had in his stable. Right now he's got two. If War ever returns, he might come back with top rank. And then he would have the top three. Because I had War as my number one pound for pound uh before before he retired, because the wins over Kovalev. Uh but I don't know. I'm I'm Bud might uh, him and Bud would have been my one and two, and then Loma would have been three. But um, I don't know, man. It was a pretty good fight last night. The Salido fight, I haven't watched that yet. I watched some highlights, and I hate that Lomachenko can't go back and, and, and rectify that loss because um, so I think Salido retired last night. I mean, he he was in a phone booth fight, uh, and he got beat the hell up. But I would like to see Lomachenko now because uh, you can see last night with Rigo, he's not, you know, 
if Salito did the low blows or whatever, I believe Lomachenko would have, you know, probably hit him back low. Mm, got a little bit more experience now and stuff like that. But I'm going to try to get more videos out, man, when I got time. Uh, but uh, overall, last night was a pretty good night of boxing. Uh, I just hate that Rigo went out like that, man. He went out like a sucker, man. I wish he wouldn't have went out like that, you know. I wish he would have just went out on his shield. You know, that would have been the best thing for him to do. And most people would respect him more for doing that um, than quitting. Because at the end of the fight, uh, Lomachenko said that he fought with a broken hand uh, in Macau. I guess he was fighting on the Pacquiao. Pacquiao. Uh, was it Pacquiao, Algeria or Pacquiao? It was one of Pacquiao undercards, but he fought the last six rounds of his fight with a broken hand or a fractured hand or something like that. And Loma said last night, if you want to be a boxer, you got to be willing to die in the ring. So that just shows you the difference in his heart and Rigo's heart. I mean, it makes Rigo kind of look like a bitch, but it's all good, man. Just a quick video. I hope everybody enjoyed the fight, man. Had a good and safe weekend. Peace.